Okay, so that is the uh, trailer for Q into the storm, and it's funny because so much of that, um, so so much of that footage is primarily from the last couple of episodes. Uh, but what you see throughout the series is just really fascinating, in how it evolves over the has evolved over the period over the years. One of my favorite. Uh, podcasts has become the QAnon Anonymous podcast, and they do dig deep into the conspiracy theory itself, as well as other conspiracy theories over the years. It's funny, insightful, and brilliant how they explore the lunacy behind QAnon with various guests, including Frederick Brennan, who's been on several times, and even Colin Hoback, who, who they interviewed on yesterday's episode. And there are a variety of perspectives that are brought to uh, these different conspiracy theories. And they also chart where the theory has moved to over the years and the costs some followers of Hugh have incurred, including their lives. The fact that the podcast has existed for as long as Cullen had been making the series and that both have plenty of worthwhile content on the same subject is a credit to how both projects have been able to explore a topic from different angles. Uh, in a way, that makes QAnon the perfect entry point for, to tonight's topic, because as you probably guessed, Paranoia Cinema has found a variety of ways to tell a similar sort of narrative over the years. I did a uh, topic search on Wikipedia recently with regards to paranoid and conspiracy th thrillers, and it was interesting how broad they view the topic when it comes to movies. Hitchcock is well rep represented in just thinking about it. Uh, movies like Rear Window, North by Northwest, and Vertigo fit right in, especially when the main character seems to lose their grip on reality, as Jimmy Stewart's characters in Rear Window and Vertigo do. And then you have Charade by Stanley Donnan, where Audrey Hepburn has to figure out who's telling her the truth when her husband dies and plenty of people want money he stole in all the presence men and jfk the main characters are trying to get to the truth of real life conspiracies john travolta comes across one in brian de palma's fantastic blowout while matt damon's jason Bourne wakes up at the center of one in the born identity gene ackman is embroiled in one after a job in francis ford coppola's the conversation and Warren Beatty digs deep into one in Alan J. Pecula's The Parallax View. Mel Gibson played a conspiracy-obsessed cabbie in Conspiracy Theory, who was the subject of a type of mind control projects that are at the heart of John Frankenheimer's legendary The Manchurian Candidate. Even Marvel has dipped their toes into this type of story over the years with Iron Man 3 and Captain America The Winter Soldier. Over the years, uh, it's also been a popular narrative of science fiction, with Alex Perez's Dark City presenting a world where aliens can manipulate mankind's memories, and Steven Spielberg's Minority Report, where a futuristic DC's pre-crime officer must clear his name when he is claimed to be a murderer himself. Of course, uh, the iconic sci-fi exploration of conspiracy theories and uncertain realities is the Wachowski sisters' The Matrix, which poses, poses that machines have created a reality for humanity to live in that is subject that is little more than a computer program while man is used as energy for the machines. That's actually where the term red pill comes from, as Morpheus gives Neo the option to learn the truth or to remain part of the artificial world that he knows. The Matrix leads me to the second recent documentary that inspired this discussion. And just a minute. One of my favorite films at Sundance this year was Rodney Asher's A Glitch in the Matrix. And it looks at the concept of simulation theory, which poses that our world is just a simulation which another living entity controls. 
If you're not familiar with Escher's name, he was the director of Room 237, which presented several different theories and readings on Stanley Kubrick's The Shining from over the years. As much as I adore The Shining, I kind of felt Room 237 is kind of rubbish, and it feels like a YouTube video that somehow got a theatrical release. For that reason, I was skeptical going into A Glitch in the Matrix, though I was intrigued all the same by the subject matter. Like Asher succeeds in exploring theories and ideas in a way he felt short on with Room 237, and it doesn't hurt that the technical qualities of his newest film are much stronger. And let's go ahead and watch that trailer. 